Believe it or not, more than half the job listings across a wide range of industries identify Excel as an essential skill. From administrative assistants, to sales managers, to data analysts, to name a few. But the turning point comes when you master Excel skills that can either make a company money, or save a company money, or preferably both. In this video, I'm going to share three Excel skills that will put you on the fast track to the top. Now, I've included a link in the video description to the files so you can try it out yourself. But watch the video through first because I'm going to move at pace to give you an overview. And then you can watch again, slow down the speed, and pause and rewind as required. Here I've got three years worth of sales order and shipping data stored in three separate CSV files that I'll use to demonstrate. Of course, these could just as easily be monthly data files that get exported from a system. If we open one of the files and take a look, you can see it contains columns for the order information, product and pricing details, and shipping data. And each file has a couple of thousand rows. Let's say one of your tasks is to consolidate this data into a single table, and then generate a dashboard report that enables management to make strategic business decisions at a glance. And you need to be able to update this report with the click of a single button. The first step is to automate the data gathering and cleaning process with Power Query. This is going to save your company money and make you an invaluable employee. And I don't mean you'll be more productive. I mean life-changing efficiency gains. Here's a comment left on one of my Power Query videos where Emmanuel states they've been able to produce their work in half the time. Imagine being able to halve the time it takes to do your work. Here's another from Bernie who says his report used to take the better part of a week at month end, and he was able to get it down to less than an hour. Now, I don't know what Bernie's hourly rate is, but let's say it's $30 and it took 30 hours to create his reports each month, and now it takes less than an hour. That's over 10 grand in savings per year. And while it might not sound like a lot, if your company's net profit margin is 10%, that's the equivalent of generating a hundred grand in sales. But probably more importantly, Bernie's report is now in management's hands a week earlier every month so they can make more timely decisions. I don't think Bernie and Emmanuel's companies are going to be letting them go anytime soon. Are you ready? Let me show you how you can do this too. As I said, I'll use Power Query to automate the data gathering process. Let's close this file down and we'll go into our Excel file that we're going to do the analysis in. And on the data tab of the ribbon in the get and transform data group, you'll find the Power Query tools. And while my data is in CSV files, Power Query can get data from loads of different file types and it can get millions of rows of data. That is, it isn't limited to the 1 million rows of data in the Excel grid. Now my files are in a folder, so I'm going to go from file, from folder, and they're in this folder here called data and I'll click open. Here you can see Power Query's detected the three files and at the bottom, I can combine and transform the data or I can combine and load it straight to my default, which is an Excel table in the workbook, or I can choose where to load it to. Now I want to make some transformations first. So let's go combine and transform data. At the combine files window, it's giving me a preview of the first file, but I can choose others. It's detected a comma delimiter and the preview looks pretty good. So let's click OK. And in the Power Query editor window on the left, we have the queries that Power Query has automatically written for us to consolidate the data. Now if we click on the source name, this is the file names and load more, you can see it's got all three files in this one table. Now I don't need these queries on the left, so I'm just going to collapse the pane here and that gives us a bit more space. You can see it's named this query data. Let's add sales to the front of it. And the next thing I want to do is just grab the shipping date and we'll left click and drag. I'm just gonna bring it over closer to the order date column because I want to calculate the number of days it takes between ordering and shipping. So with ship date selected, holding down shift, I'm going to select order date. And then I'm going to add a column that calculates the difference in days. And now we can see that the first order took two days to ship. Let's double click to rename this column, days to ship. The next thing we want to do is find the actual sale amount. We've got order quantity, unit sale price and discount, but we don't have the sale amount. 
Let's just first of all change the data type for the discount to percentage. So you can see this item was discounted by 8%. So to add a column, we're going to select order quantity, holding down shift, add unit sell price. And then on the add column tab, we're going to add a standard calculation that is to multiply. There's our sale amount, but it hasn't taken into account the discount. So what we can do is up in the formula bar, you can see it's written the formula for me. I haven't needed to know how to do it. And I can also modify it. So let's multiply the unit sell price by one minus the discount. That is to multiply it by, in this case, 92%. So we're going to multiply the unit sell price by 92%, effectively taking 8% off. Press enter. And now we have the net sell price. Let's rename this column. Just double click. We'll call this sale amount. And I think we'll round it because currently some of them are to four decimal places. So on the transform tab, rounding, we can round it up, down, or just round. I'll go with round and two decimal places. And now our sale amount's complete. Okay, let's left click and drag and we'll just bring it in line with our other amount columns. And the last thing I want to do is I don't need the name of the file. So just with it selected, press delete. And that's it, our data's ready. And if we look over here on the right at the applied steps pane, you can see Power Query has recorded all of the steps I've taken. So when I get my next year's data, I can simply save it in that same folder with the other CSV files and click one button to add it to the data set. So stick around to see that. Right, I'm ready to load my data to Excel, which we do via the Home tab, Close and Load. And Close and Load 2 is going to allow me to choose where I load it. You can see I can load it to a table in the Excel worksheet, load it to a pivot table report, a pivot chart, or only create a connection. And if I do that, I can add it to the data model, which is just another name for Power Pivot. But first, you've seen how Power Query can significantly streamline your work. My Power Query course goes beyond just understanding how to use the tool. It focuses on enhancing your efficiency reducing your workload from days to minutes. If you're interested, you can find the course links in the video description. Power Pivot enables you to create data models within Excel that connect multiple tables together into a database, similar to Access if you've used that. From there, you can summarize and analyze the data in pivot tables and pivot charts. And with Power Pivot's formula language, DAX, which is very close to Excel, you can perform advanced calculations to analyze your data in ways you never thought possible. So I'll close and load to load to the data model. And you can see on the right, the queries that are currently in this file. I'll close that pane down. I don't need to work with them anymore. And if we open Power Pivot, which we can do from the data tab over on the right, manage data model, or if you've got the Power Pivot tab enabled, you can click manage from there. So here's our sales data table. And if you notice, we have customer ID column, but we don't have any other customer information. For example, where those customers live, which would allow us to analyze it by state, for example. And if we look at the SKU column, we don't actually know anything about these products. So to get around that, in this file, I've got some lookup tables. This one's going to look up the SKU and tell me what category it is. And this one looks up the customer and tells me what state they're in. And that's going to allow me to analyze my data by these categories and states. I've also got tables for the shipping mode and what order I want to sort them in rather than just defaulting to alphabetical and likewise for the order priority. So let's load these into Power Pivot and we'll use Power Query to do that as well. So on the data tab of the ribbon, starting with the category table from table range, because these are all in a table, this one's called category dim, Customer DIM, short for dimension, ship model sort, and order priority sort. So on the data tab of the ribbon, I'm going to, with the category table selected from table range, and I don't need to do anything here. I can simply close and load to, and we're going to create a connection and add it to the data model. Let's repeat for the other tables. Okay, that's all my tables loaded. Let's go back to Power Pivot. And now you can see there's my five tables. The next thing I need to do is create relationships via the diagram view between each of the tables. You can see my sales data table here. Let's bring these over closer. 
so they're easier to work with and we'll find the other one hiding and the easiest way to create a relationship between these tables is to simply select the field in one table and left click and drag it to the table it's related to so this is my customer id and my customer in my customer dimension table next let's create the relationship for the SKU and we want to connect the ship mode to our ship mode sorted table and lastly the order priority to the order priority table so that's all of my relationships created and next I need to set some formatting and my sort order rules so we'll go back to the data view and on the sales data table one of the great things about Power Pivot is you can set the formatting in Power Pivot so that it feeds through to all of your pivot tables and charts without you having to keep formatting all the numbers. So for the sale amount, I'm going to add a comma separator and hide the decimal places. For the shipping amount, I'm going to also add a comma separator and that's going to set it to two decimal places. That's fine. The next thing I want to do is set my sort order. So my shipping mode will sort in alphabetical order by default. I want to sort it based on this numeric column. So on the home tab, sort by column. Here, my ship mode is going to be sorted by the sort order column. And let's repeat that for the order priority. Sort by column and sorting by the sort order. Okay, those jobs are done in Power Pivot now. So I can close that window down. And we'll go to this blank sheet here and we'll do our analysis. Before we start, let's just take a look at the dashboard. The first chart we're going to build is our sales line chart. So it's sales by salesperson over time. To do that, we'll go to the insert tab of the ribbon and then I'm going to insert a pivot chart. It's detected that I have a data model. Yes, I'll use that. And it's going to pop it in the existing worksheet. So I'll click OK. Let's just move that up there and then we'll go to the field list and I'm going to left click and drag just to bring it out over closer to the chart. You can see here it lists all my tables in my data model. Those are the ones with the orange silo. And then we've also got the tables in this file. I'm obviously going to be working with my data model. So for this chart, I want to go to the sales data and I want to look at the order date. And you'll notice it's automatically grouped it into day, month, quarter and year, which is perfect. And then I want the salesperson in the legend and the sale amount. Now it's defaulted to give me a column chart. Let's change that to a line chart, which are best for data over time. We'll do a little bit of formatting. I'm going to hide the value fields and the axis fields and the legend buttons. They just take up way too much space. We'll remove the grid lines and we'll put the legend at the top and I want to add a chart title. Let's drag the title over here. This will be sales and we can move our salesperson over there. Let's make the chart a bit wider. We'll tweak it further a bit later on. For now, I can use my expand and collapse buttons to drill down into the data. So we can go down to month, even day level, which is probably a step too far. Let's leave it at quarters and that's that visual done. I'm just going to move it down there so it's out of the way and we'll insert the next one. So again, insert tab, pivot chart, click OK. Let's bring it up here so we can see it. And let's take a look at our dashboard. The next one we're building is sales by category, the bar chart. So let's go ahead. We need our sales data again and we need the category. Now, remember, we have a dimension table that maps the SKU to the category. So let's use that. And I want to also see this by salesperson. So we'll go back to our sales data. And I want the salesperson above the category. Now it's defaulted to a column chart. Let's change that on the design tab to a bar chart. Because the labels are quite long, a bar chart is going to give us more room to see those labels. All right, let's right click and hide these fill buttons. We don't need the legend or the grid lines. Let's add data labels, which means we don't need our horizontal axis. And then with the axis selected, control one to open the formatting. Let's bring that over closer to the chart. Here I'm going to sort the categories in reverse order because you'll notice they're back to front. Accessories is at the bottom instead of at the top. And that's because it's a bar chart. Everything's a bit upside down and back to front. 
The other thing I'll do is change the gap width to 50. Just makes the bars a bit wider. And let's put those data labels inside the end. Now you can't read them, but don't worry, I'm going to tweak the colors later. The last thing for this chart is to give it a title. Sales by category, and I'll just left click and drag it over. All right, let's just pop that down there for a minute and we'll go and insert the next one. Let's take a look at what it is. The next one will be our average shipping price per item and then we'll do average days to ship. So again, insert pivot chart. So this one is going to look at the ship mode. So we want the ship mode from the sorted table and then we want the product container and then we want the average shipping price per item. And we can't simply take the shipping amount and average that, but we can use Power Pivot's built-in DAX formula language to write a custom measure. And we do that by the Power Pivot tab, Measures, New Measure. And we'll call this measure average shipping price per item. And the formula will use the divide function. Let me just control and scroll my mouse wheel to make it a bit bigger. And we're dividing the sum of the shipping amount. So we can just refer to the column by opening a square bracket, tab to select it, and then we'll close parentheses on that formula. So we're dividing the sum of the shipping amount by the sum of the order quantity. Just arrow down to I get it, and then close my sum. And then if that returns an error, let's just return a blank with two double quotes. Let's check the formula. No errors, all good. Let's set it to a number. We'll put in a comma separator that probably won't be required and two decimal places. We click OK. And now we scroll down. You can see my custom measure is a field I can drag into my values area. Now it's inserted a column chart. Let's go and change that to a bar chart to give the labels more room. And we can resize it. Let's quickly hide some of these field buttons. We don't need a legend or grid lines. We'll add data labels and let's turn off the horizontal axis because that's redundant now. We'll apply some formatting. So I'll just bring this over closer. We'll set the gap width to 50 to make the bars wider. And we'll go back and select the axis. And like the other one, let's change the categories so they're in reverse order. All right. Let's give it a proper title. This is average shipping price per item. And we'll just move it over to the left, consistent with the others. The next chart I want is similar to this one. So I'm going to control D to duplicate this one. And then instead of average shipping price, I want to know the average number of days to ship. And that was the column that we calculated in Power Query. So let's bring that in and we'll change the summarization to average. And then instead of product container, Let's bring in order priority. We want order priority by ship mode. And all we need to do now is change the chart title. So this is average days to ship. And that one's done. Okay. All right, we'll make these a little bit smaller. That will do. We'll do some more formatting later. All right, let's look at our dashboard again. We've got two more charts, two map charts. Now these are a bit tricky because Map charts don't support pivot tables. So what we have to do is trick Excel into letting us create a map chart from a pivot table. So I'm going to insert a pivot table and this time select from data model. We'll just pop it there, that's fine. And this one is going to be my sales by state. Sale amount. And remember we had to create the lookup table for the customers to find out what state they're in. So that's our sale amount by state. And then I'm just going to copy this pivot table and we'll paste one beside and this will be my average days to ship. So we'll take out the sale amount and instead we'll put in the days to ship and we'll set it to average. All right, so we've got our two pivot tables set up. Now we need to insert the charts. So in order to trick Excel, all I'm going to do is copy this pivot table and paste it as values, control shift V for those with 365, or you can use paste special values if you don't have 365. So there's my data. 
I'm just going to select it and I'm going to exclude the grand total because we don't need that in our chart. And then on the insert tab, maps, build map. And I need to accept that Bing's going to get my data and there's my chart. Now, in order to point it back to the pivot table so that it can detect changes in my data and dynamically update, I'm going to right click the chart, select data, and then I'm just going to edit this range. So instead of picking up columns X and Y, we're going to pick up columns R and S. I'll click OK. And now you can see my chart's picking up this data. So I don't need this anymore. We'll delete that. Let's do some formatting of the chart. So first of all, I'm going to move my legend to the top. I'm going to get rid of the chart title because my legend is going to act as the chart title, but we need to give the series a name. So we'll right click and go into select data. And let's just edit this. Or we'll just call this sales and click OK and OK. So that's that one done. Let's move that over here out of the way. And then we'll just repeat that for this one. So copy paste as values without the grand total included. I'm going to insert a map chart and then we're going to right click, select data, edit this so that it picks up the pivot table instead. And then we don't need the title and we'll move the legend to the top and it will behave as the title. Let's right click and go into select data and we'll edit the series and give it a name, average days to ship. Click OK and OK, and that one's done. Now we'll move that over out of the way. That is all our analysis done. So far, I've only been able to showcase some of Power Pivot's capabilities, but my Power Pivot and DAX course offers a comprehensive path. These tools help reveal insights that can guide your company towards new opportunities. Taking these courses is about positioning yourself as a key strategist and analyst who can uncover and ask the pivotal questions that drive progress. So check out the link to the courses in the video description. Now we've arrived at perhaps the most visually impactful skill, data visualization with Excel dashboards, my favorite. This skill is more than just presentation of data. It's about transforming the data into a narrative that informs the decision-making process effortlessly. And a well-crafted dashboard does more than just display numbers. It narrates the story behind the data through charts and summary statistics. This narrative enables stakeholders to grasp complex insights at a glance. And this is where you can help the company make money by making data not just accessible, but actionable. Now I've got a sheet here ready for my dashboard. So all I need to do is copy all my charts out and to select them all, I'm going to control A and then control X to cut and then control V to paste them in. And we'll just quickly arrange them. Okay, that's my charts roughly in place. One thing I want to do is go to the view tab of the ribbon and we'll get rid of the grid lines. Our report looks a bit neater. Now, it's important that you color code your data so that it makes it quicker and easier for your viewers to interpret. We've got two types of data here. We've got shipping data and sales data. So we really should color code them accordingly. So with my shipping chart selected, I'm going to go into the design tab and just change the colors to shades of purple. And likewise for this one. And this is my shipping. Let's change this also to shades of purple. These are sales. So let's change the colors here to shades of blue. And we might go with this blue color here in keeping with my sales by category. And it also matches my map. Now, I'm not particularly thrilled with these colors. So one thing I can do is on the page layout tab of the ribbon, under colors, I can choose from a different color scheme. And you'll notice all of the charts update automatically. And I think we'll go with aspect. Now, of course, you can create your own custom colors in keeping with your branding. So that's also an option. Okay, that's better. Now we can see our sales are all in shades of orange and our shipping's all in shades of purple. While many dashboards are adequate as is, with Excel, we can enable data exploration with the use of slices to filter various segments of the data. 
So I'll insert slices. I'm just going to select one of the charts. This one here, sales by category, and then on the insert tab, slicer. So this gives me the category field I want a slicer for, the order date year field, and the salesperson. Click OK. There's my three slicers. Let's just select them and we'll quickly do some formatting, changing the button height. I'll make the width 8.5 and the height 1. And we'll go into the slicer settings and we'll turn off the header so that we can see the buttons. All right, we need to give them some more columns. So the year and the category need four columns. And then the salesperson, there's only three of those, so we'll give that three columns. All right, let's just roughly move them into place. I'll select them all and we'll use the alignment tools to align them left and distribute them vertically so they're evenly spaced. All right, I might put the year first because it's more likely you're going to filter by year and then perhaps the category and then the salesperson. So with the slices inserted, I can now click on them and it filters the chart that I'd selected when I inserted them. So we need to attach these slices to the other chart. So right click, report connections, and here I can select the charts I want to filter. I'm not going to select chart one because that's my line chart and I don't want to filter that. It's better to leave it in context, but we'll select all of the others and click OK. And now you can see all of the other charts just adjusted. Let's rinse and repeat for the other ones. So this one, I want to filter the line chart, but not the sales by category, because I already have the categories broken out. I don't need to filter them again. And um, then we'll filter the other ones. Click OK. And then let's rinse and repeat for this one. Again, not the sales by category, because it already has the salespeople broken down. All right, so now when I select a salesperson here, this one doesn't filter because we already have them broken out, but the other charts have all filtered. So now we can just see Richard in the line chart. Selecting John, now we just see John and so on. We can filter down to bikes and keep drilling down until we get to the level we want to see. It's one thing to set up a report like this, but you don't want it to be a burden each time you have to update it. Thankfully, when you get your data with Power Query and then model it with Power Pivot and build your analysis based on pivot tables and pivot charts, you can update them with one click. I'll add the 2024 CSV file to my folder. Just paste it in. This just simulates you getting new data. And then all I need to do is go back to Excel. On the Data tab of the ribbon, I'm going to click Refresh All. And if you keep an eye on this slicer here, it will include 2024 once the data is updated. And just like that, we now have 2024 data in our report. Let's just give this chart a bit more room. And now our users can interact with the slices, selecting different views. Remember, they can expand and collapse the various pivot charts to get just the view that they want. Let's do one final tidy up. We'll give this sheet a name, dashboard. And this sheet contains our pivot tables for the map charts. Let's get rid of those columns. We don't need them. We don't need this anymore. And let's rename this map chart pivots. And our report is ready to share. You might think that building reports like this will see you out of a job because there's nothing to maintain. But on the contrary, being able to build simple solutions like this that you can then hand over to someone more junior frees you up for promotion into other roles. The last thing you want is to be so essential to a role that your boss can't bear to let you move on. And to prepare you for your next role, you'll want to learn Power BI, which also uses the same Power Query and Power Pivot tools that we've just covered in Excel. But with Power BI, we have next level charting capabilities that we can only dream of in Excel. So check out this video on Power BI next. I'll see you there.